These are a couple of small furnaces. The top one is made by the folks at K.H. Hoopert in Chicago. It's a nice little unit. I managed to pick that up at one of the local gun shows for a song and a dance. It's got a nice sealed compartment for it with fire brick around it, a nice door. I do a lot of small parts in this, my muzzle brakes, different recoil lugs, etc. Excellent little oven will do a lot of small parts for you. It's got a temperature control here and a really nice gauge that's graduated in 25 degree increments. So we simply watch our needle, use our dial control here to adjust our temperature settings. And once the part is allowed to soak, we're basically going to stabilize our heat temperature at that point and allow it to soak for whatever designated time we have based on the alloy that we're heat treating. Below, we have a little more complicated heat treat oven. This is made by the folks at Nye. It's a model 2-525 Series 2. And as you can see, it's a programmable heat treat oven. A little more sophisticated than the top oven. This is something we have to watch manually. Here we can program for the rate of temperature increase and hold it at a specific degree or temperature setting. It's got a little bit bigger compartment on the inside, so we can heat treat a little bit larger part. We've got a ceramic tray that all of the parts will be set in. You don't want to set them directly on your fire brick. A little ceramic tray works really well. Make sure and space your parts evenly when you're going to stack them up. If you've got a long cylindrical part, stand it up, lay it down. That's another thing that you need to know if you're going to be quenching parts and they're long and slender, we want to make sure and quench them in a vertical position. We've got our large container with quenching oil in it. We're going to remove the parts from the heat treat oven and submerge them in this oil. We want to do it compatible with the part that we are quenching. If we've got long pins that we've machined, we obviously want to drop those pins in a vertical mode into the oil. We don't want to drop them in sideways because the quenching process is going to bend that particular part, okay? It's very, very critical that we do the quenching operation correctly. If we're working with tool steels, it's important that they be done in a controlled atmosphere, a vacuum type furnace. These are neither vacuum furnaces. This is something that your commercial heat treater will have. And this reduces the amount of scale that we have on the part. If we have a critical part, the tolerance is critical, the finish is critical. We don't want to have a bunch of scale coming back on it. Whereas if we took it out of one of these furnaces, quenched it in the oil and removed it, we're going to have a flaky, scaly substance that we're going to either glass bead off, polish off, or grind off when we're done. So keep those things in mind if you're going to be doing your own heat treating. On the safety side of thing, anytime that we are heat treating, it's imperative that we wear good eye protection, a face shield, and good long welder's gloves, okay? When we quench our parts into the quench oil, we're usually going to get a fire on top of the oil. Nothing really to be concerned about. Don't have the library around it. Don't have anything that can catch on fire around the quenching area. You want to have a suitable amount of oil when you quench because remember we're dropping a part into the oil that is at a temperature of 1500 to 1600 degrees. So the oil is going to heat up really quick. Part of the hardening process requires that we have a temperature differential in the quenching oil. So as those temperatures elevate we're either going to need to use some new oil or allow the oil to cool again before we quench more parts. I hope I've provided you with a basic understanding of heat treatment. Let's go back and review a few things. We need to know the type of alloy we're heat treating, its critical temperature, the temperature at which we will temper the part to bring it to the desired Rockwell testing. Again, if you're unfamiliar with heat treating practices, by all means, take the commercial heat treater to lunch sometime, bend his ear a little bit, you'll find him more than helpful and bringing you up to speed with your own little heat treat oven. They're an invaluable source for information. They do this for a living, so they're familiar with all of the different types of alloys and what works best in order to achieve your desired results. There are a lot of good books available. Some college courses offer a course in metallurgy. That would be a great thing to take in the evening to expand your awareness of tool steels, alloys, and heat treating properties.